excited to be showing you my home, which is an 1886 church. I'm very lucky to live here. It's tiny. I don't think anyone else could put up with it, but I can. And I can't wait to show you. I would like to say that uh, if you haven't already, subscribe and thank all the others that have joined me uh, on the previous videos. And there's a lot more to come. So let's go and have a look. So this is the kitchen. We have the living room, the dining room, and a bedroom upstairs, and that's basically it. Works perfectly well for me and a uh, few visitors. I'd like to show you a few of my uh, more unusual possessions, particularly being the killer kid stove. Here we go. I'll pull it out so you can have a good look at it, and you'll understand the story better. Clear 19, I think it's 1906. That's it, and all its originality there. They came as a sort of working and educational and play tool. So mum's cooking, she's got a stove exactly the same. Kids got one here. Ideally what you're supposed to do is pull this out here for spirits. That whole run comes here and you can actually cook a piece of meat here. So you can do your other little bits. Boil water in your bain marie and then pour it into the kettle. You've got various little sized pots. All these beautiful for little rings here. It's brass based and it's got a nipple coating on it. Beautifully made. I bought this about 40 years ago through the antique shop. It cost $3,000 back then. A lot of money. But what it did come with was a plethora of other miniature kitchen area which is all quite rare. It's basically everything that mum had all scaled down. Beautiful little coffee grinder here. Everything you could ever want right down to cheese cutters, I think, yeah, like salt pigs, um, whisks, jugs, lots of little mugs. Some of the even smaller pieces I put in here. We've got a few chocolate molds. We've got more of the miniature uh, pieces, and I think most of them would just date to the turn of the century. Quite weird that I ended up uh, collecting miniature kitchen earlier and ended up in such a small house. So back to the stove, why it's so special is that in 1906 electricity was coming into most homes and mum's stove would have gone from wood fired to plugged into the electric and this little girl who always reminds me of violet in willy wonka chocolate factory because she wanted more she had this stove and she wanted her mum to send it back to the company because they came through sears roebuck catalog you know your very first online shopping really they sent it back and they got this is the only one in existence that got electrified so the company put that in properly, they put switches so the little girl could switch hers on just like her mum did in 1906. But what they didn't know about electricity back then was that it really needed to be earthed. And she was playing with water in the Bainbury, doing everything, thrilled at the electrics, had it plugged in. And this is the whole story that has come with it. And um, the story says that uh, she was busy playing and she got electrocuted and died. I don't know if there's a bit of a moral to the story there of just settling for how it came. It's the only one. They, they chopped the wires off, of course, and never did it again. We now understand electricity a lot more. So we've got this little miniature washstand, all made out of cowrie, and got little miniature tiles. And what's cool about that? It's great to contrast it with its full-size washstand here. As this is quite rare because it's got the double tiles. So I'd like to explain how this little church came to be. It was 1886 in the middle of nowhere, very rural, and it was also right by the road. It was derelict by about 1919 and all boarded up so it, it wasn't used for many years and then stood until the 1970s when someone bought it, took it away from the road, pulled it back on this nice piece of land here. This uh, builder and uh, his wife were from England originally and she requested him to build her a little English cottage. So this is where the beams come in and it is rather odd because from the outside it doesn't fit into any New Zealand architectural look whatsoever. He did put two, what we call lean-tos here, two wings on so we've got the kitchen, bathroom, dining room here and bedroom upstairs. Basically there was a fireplace. And there's an entranceway. And that in its entirety 
is the floor plan. Yeah, so you've got the rafters. So if you were stood here, it would have seemed a lot, lot skinnier and a lot taller. So to get the bedroom, they put a mezzanine floor in. That's really dictated. It's really good for short people like me. Suits me fine. And that's basically it. You can see right through the house at any, at any point. Lots of windows. Still rather dark, but uh, I like it because there's lots of light outside and I, I get a bit like sunburnt with being a redhead. <laughs> uh, but this is the original door. This stained glass would not have been original. This, I think, was done in the 70s when they made it into a little home. In my collection, I've got quite a few pieces of religious prints and bits and pieces and a lot of crosses. This is a really great place to put some of these pieces that I've collected for years and I think they've got a great home. Really old book in here which is uh, amazingly from 1596. It's beautiful as in everything's still together and it smells it smells like a really old book. And the incredible thing was the, the rarity of, of writing paper back in those days made it something that someone would actually practice their signature. It'd be so hard to get a piece of paper, unless you made your own paper, that there's quite a few generations of people's names that have written in it. I think it makes it very special. So I just like holding something that's been through so many parts of history. Spiral staircase up to my bedroom is a bit of a joke because I do think it's probably going to be the end of me. I love going up here and hiding from the world and it's like another place. I can sneak a look and see who's coming and I can hide in there. It is illegal because it doesn't have a banister and nowadays you would have to put a banister. I love it because it's fit for purpose. It gets me up and down. So this is to stop uh, me hitting my head but it doesn't stop everybody else hitting their head. Come and have a look at my bedroom. beautiful dormer so you can open up all the dormers and the wind comes right through it so it's quite airy it's also much lighter than the rest of the little church but this is the original rafters that I'm sleeping in this is the vent this also helps with some airflow so we've uh, put some of my favorite parrots and monkeys just stays closed and this is the bit of architectural vandalism I committed by hacking a piece out of the vent and putting in a piece of magnifying glass. I can see who's coming up the drive. This is my beloved horse, Missy. Had a real personality. I've been around the South Island twice on her. Beautiful scenery. This is Lake Tekapo, jewel of the crown of the South Island. Very much the love of my life, the horse, and I did give up riding when she died. I really couldn't go onto another horse. She was way too much fun. So this is the bed. This came in pieces, otherwise we'd never have got it up the spiral staircase. Family, that's my mum and got a few others from the past there. And then here is all my tax and necessities of, a, of an office that I can just hide because you only deal with that when you need to. One room to go. And as you always have to have in a tiny house with not much room for anything is, is, a, is a saint with a coffin. So this saint is about 250 years old. He's all wax. He wouldn't last a day in the sunshine. So he's lasted very well from not melting to this point. He's very happy from what I can tell. And I have this lovely Santos doll. These are votives that I got from Greece. And they would write on the back of them the name of the person that had the ailment. So you'd have a sore tummy, sore eyes. These were then left on the church wall and people would pray within the congregation for that particular body part. So this is Dora, Dora the Explorer. She's my boy's bird that I've inherited somehow. <coughs> yes, she loves Spanish music and she goes out every day and she goes into a larger aviary, so she has a lot of fun. And she likes to come in at night. She likes to watch telly. She likes to scream at the adverts. She loves game shows where they all clap. She goes off her head 
She's called the Harvest Woman. Colours are, are beautiful, very, very earthy. So although I'm not really into china, more into the more unusual things than really having a china cabinet with lots of your favourites in it, the 12 piece dessert set, which is all hand painted, these pink plates that are all around the room, I decided to paint this room blue just to make the very most of the pink and white plates and it's a very rich colour this blue but it does actually lighten what was otherwise a very dark room. There's a couple of other things of interest here. I particularly like these whimsical fairground giveaways. So about 1880, you went to a fair and if you won a prize, they'd give you this. It's done very cheaply with glass and cardboard and the motifs inside are made of wax. So just like the wax ink, they would melt in a day and they're gone. They're actually very rare now because they were so cheap that people didn't look after them. They didn't put them in the china cabinet. They got played with and they were all broken. So that about wraps up the entire tiny house. All of the four rooms were then perfectly practical, big enough for me and certainly big enough for the two dogs, eh Frankie? It's all good, plenty of room. So a lot of the decisions I've made in this house have been entirely up to me. The other factor is that I'm never leaving, so I don't have to worry about leaving any of this behind and what will happen to it. So I'll just exit stage left at some point. <laughs> I also haven't shown you my bathroom and toilet yet because they're a whole other situation. So I decided I wanted to shower in a waterfall. I'll leave that up to your imagination and show you that in the next video. So bye for now.